Welcome back, all you Dash dancers, to another episode of Video Game World Tours, a series where we slow down and soak in a game's environment. Today we're looking at the red-headed stepchild of Nintendo's library, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Our first stop is at Princess Peach's Castle. This is one I played on a lot back in the day. Even if the layout is kind of annoying with the castle tower in the middle, I think the bright colors kept me coming back. The green grass and blue water are really welcoming, which is very reminiscent of Peach's Castle from Super Mario 64. This stage obviously took inspiration from that, but there's a few differences that make this version distinct. First off is the background. Look at all the hills behind the castle. That's what stands out to me as the biggest change. Though the level designers did a good job at adding detail behind the castle that didn't exist in that game, this feels natural. And something I want to point out is how you can very obviously tell they faked the scale of the mountains in the distance. Like those are supposed to be super far away. But you can tell they're not actually that far. They're relatively close, but small. Gives the illusion that they are really far out. It's something I've kind of taken for granted over the years playing this and other Smash games, but this truly does feel like a stage. A stage in that it's fake. Just an illusion to make you think you're actually in the Mushroom Kingdom, and that there's tall mountains way out in the distance. It's kind of quaint in a way. Oh, another difference from this castle to Super Mario 64's is that there's water all around. Now that I think about it, this seems like a peculiar place to build a castle. Moats make sense. Mario 64's castle had a moat. This is a lake. Peach's castle was built on top of a lake? Is that weird? It feels weird. And you normally don't get a super good look at it during normal gameplay but there's a little island right next to the castle. This looks nothing like what we saw in Super Mario 64. Like, what's with this flower bed? That's new. And there's all these paths that converge right in front of the castle. It's uncanny in a way. It uses iconography we're familiar with. The shape of the castle, the stained glass peach above the doorway, the hills, the water, all stuff that was in Super Mario 64 but just enough was changed and added to make it different enough to feel slightly weird. Cornaria is one of the stages I probably played the most over the years. Like Princess Peach's Castle, the color palette spoke to me. But I also liked the layout. Some stages in this game have different zones where, depending on where you're fighting, the vibe changes. Up along the top of the Great Fox, it's normal. Occasionally some R-Wings will dip down, but it's chill for the most part. Then you have the back of the ship. Falling from the tip of the Great Fox's dorsal fin, you're dropped into a pretty chaotic spot. Corneria speeding below you to the right, and a massive wall to the left. It's a cage match as you and your opponents hopelessly smack each other around, with no sense of strategy or regard for self-preservation. There is no chance for rest on the right side of the stage. On the left side, though, there is a spot. You can fall off this ledge and jump over to the Great Fox's gun. It's not like this is a spot Jigglypuff or Kirby can only reach, but it is a little respite from the action especially if you have fighters duking it out elsewhere. Though God forbid if you ever want to get back to the stage, you better not mess up. As for details in this stage, I always found this little opening to be so tantalizing. I'm assuming it's supposed to be a hangar for the R-Wings, but the scale isn't quite right. You know, I never really thought about that. The scale is super off here. Look at how big Fox is compared to the cockpit window of the Great Fox. I guess they had to do that to make the stage playable, it's just something I never noticed. 
It's cool how the ground below is always moving. The distance you travel is just long enough, and the environments are nondescript enough to make it feel like you really are flying across a planet. It's not like an old Scooby-Doo episode where they start running and you can immediately see repeating elements in the background. I mean, you can see them here if you're paying attention and playing long enough, but who's gonna do that when they can kick a cute little Kirby to its death? Short pit stop at another stage before we move on. Venom. I didn't play this much at all as a kid. It felt too dark, and more importantly, the layout felt off. You're still on the Great Fox, like in Corneria, but the perspective shifted. It's facing towards the camera, and you're fighting on the wings. Something about seeing the Great Fox from this angle is so cursed. It's like seeing a front-facing cartoon character. It just ain't right. God didn't intend for us to see the Great Fox this way. Venom is blasphemy as far as I'm concerned. Corneria is holy. Foreside is a stage I didn't play on a lot. The building rooftops are small, creating a bunch of tiny little platforms that you jump to, with long chasms between them reaching down to the city streets. It's awkward to traverse, but aesthetically, I love it. Admittedly, I haven't played Earthbound. Well, I have, but I didn't reach Foreside. Looking up a picture of it and, wow. The Melee development team really went all out on making this place much bigger than it was in Earthbound. Just so many buildings in the background. It's interesting how this expands on the Earthbound world. Like, you look at this, and you can kinda buy that this is a video game city. It's obviously lacking a lot, but big picture, you kinda get it. There's a handful of skyscrapers, it's pretty much a city. This literally is a city. There would be so many more people living in this city compared to the one in the SNES game. It's bizarre to think of older RPGs getting scaled up like that. And then there's the streets below. Just little dots of light all over the place. They didn't need to texture the whole city at ground level. You're playing on the rooftops of some skyscrapers. You wouldn't be able to see it anyway. I like that this stage takes place in a completely normal city. Well, normal excluding the giant UFO that occasionally drops in. I like how that single little detail turns this from normal city to fantasy video game city. Like, look at how big this is. This is Independence Day sized. And it's really high up, super close to the top blast zone. One light upward kick and you're getting sent to the stratosphere. Also, it's kind of slippery on top of the UFO. That's a weird detail. Maybe it's made of some alien technology our mortal shoes can't handle. Congo Jungle. Before I can even talk about the stage itself, I have to bring up the music. The DK rap totally sets the vibes for this stage. I can imagine a more traditional track from Donkey Kong Country playing in its place, and this would be a perfectly average stage. But the DK rap bumps it up so much for me. It's hectic, chaotic, and encourages you to play fast as does the stage layout. This bottom platform isn't the smallest out there, but it's just small enough to keep you uncomfortably close to your opponent at all times. And then of course, you have this little rock off to the side. What a wild card of an addition. Like this stage would be fine on its own. It's relatively simple, it could work by itself. But the developers added this tiny rock in the waterfall that you can stand on. It completely changes the vibe of the stage. Like if your friend gets a lead and they want to play it safe, they can just hang out here and camp you. It won't be impossible to break through their defenses, but it's a hell of a lot harder than challenging them directly on the main stage. I bet this rock is the sole reason the stage is banned and competitive. 
I don't have much to say about the aesthetics of Congo Jungle. I do have a few things though. Like I think the hut in the background is cool. I'm not a huge Donkey Kong Country fan, so I don't know if this is supposed to be any particular building. I don't remember Donkey Kong's hut ever facing a river like this, but who knows? Artistic liberties and whatnot. Could very well be his. And the platform you fight on, what's the deal with that? Why is this at the edge of a waterfall? Was it built to stay here? Now that I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like a raft. Did somebody build this raft and float down the river in it? It seems like it'd be unstable with the four upward platforms. Not sure how it's staying up either. It looks like it'd be teetering over the edge. Real quick stage before the final one of the video. Icicle Mountain. This is a stage I quite literally never played on with my friends. I'd be surprised if any of you out there played it either outside of classic or adventure mode. It's an auto-scroller that randomly scrolls up and down, and randomly speeds up and down. It's so hard to play a normal Smash match here. But that's what I think is kinda interesting about this stage. It challenges you in a different way than most in this game. It's a fight for your life against an opponent, sure, but it's also a platforming challenge. Fighting to stay on screen as the stage moves up and down whenever it wants. There will be points where the screen is extremely slow and you can fight, but when it speeds up real quick, you can only focus on surviving. Jumping, bobbing and weaving your way through the platforms, trying to stay alive. The stage's auto-scrolling paces the match in an interesting way like that. It may not be very fun to play on, but I like the tech and design work put into this stage. Alright, final stage of the video. Perhaps my favorite in the whole game. Temple. I know it's big and weird and that it's annoying to fight some characters on, but by god is this stage a guilty pleasure. It really is massive. Remember how I talked about zones of a stage back in Corneria? How the fight changes depending on where you are. I identified three in that stage. This stage has like half a dozen of those, if not more. The terrain is so different in each little chunk that you need to think about where your character is the strongest and stick to there. Even outside of thinking strategically, there were some spots I found myself gravitating to more over others. Like this bottom area. I played a lot of heavier characters, so I loved hitting opponents with super strong moves and watching them slam into walls. Kinda like the backside of the Great Fox in Corneria, it's like a cage match. There's also this sneaky little platform down below that I didn't find myself going to as much. It's kind of a risky spot, especially for someone as bad as I was, so I stuck to solid ground for the most part. I didn't go up here much either. I don't know why though. It is kind of close to the blast zone, but it's not particularly dangerous. I guess it feels kind of dangerous because the ledge is super thin here and it's a big drop down from it. Say, this stage is kind of weird, isn't it? What place in The Legend of Zelda looks like this? The stage is called Temple, but I don't remember any floating temple like this in any of the games. Ah, you know what? My big Zelda blind spot. Zelda 2. Loosely based on the palaces from Zelda 2, the wiki even points out that this Lincoln Memorial-ass building resembles the sprite used for palaces on the overworld. Still, it's kind of bizarre. Like there's not one defined palace or temple. There's multiple buildings here, none of them really stand out as the most important one. There's also rubble of a crumbled building. You can see these platforms were initially part of the roof of this building when it was still standing. Something I can't really make sense of are these little cylindrical rooms, connected with strands to similar rooms directly below them. What's that all about? Even accounting for the scale difference, I don't think this could be an elevator or something reaching between them, let alone a staircase. Maybe this is just a design thing I'm not used to seeing? Could be. 
Oh yeah, and the whole stage is floating in the sky. That's a little weird. Really high up, too. Ooh, looking down from here makes me a little queasy. That's enough of that. This stage is comfort food. Even with all the oddities I pointed out and the unbalancedness of the whole experience, I can't help but love this stage. Check out either of these videos. What could they be about? I don't know. YouTube automatically picks them. Actually, they're probably bad. Don't watch either one. Subscribe, like the video, blah blah blah. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.